Hey, how you doing out there, everybody? It's your boy from Brooklyn, Shannon Ambrosio. Just saying, are you guys ready for another cooking and eating video? Well, today on Cooking and Eating, I got my boy Otto with me. How you doing, guys? Thank you for having me. Chef extraordinaire. I went to culinary school with Otto, and today we got a little bit of the surf and turf. Oh, that's what's up. So you know what we say, folks? Keep your meat moist. Today we're gonna teach you how to keep your meat moist on land and the sea. That's what's up right there. So stay tuned for cooking and eating. We got a little yeah, surf. We're gonna get down and dirty, baby. And surf. Yes. I'm very excited about getting this done. Of course, we're in the, the summer months now. Yeah. Everybody's outside barbecuing. Really? Whether it is the surf or the turf. That's right. It could still be done indoors and it can be done outdoors. It's a fancy dish that you can uh, you can wow a lot of people by doing it. So. Wow. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> said, wow. You could wow a lot of people. You could wow a lot of people. And guys, this is true. Guys, your point, guys. <laughs> Tell them, Otz. Yeah. Tell them. Know, gotta get on the smooth side here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Listen to me. Get to, the way to anybody's heart is through their stomach, right? That's right. That's no, right. for sure. All right, so Otto, tell everybody what we got going on here. What are the ingredients and what's the most important thing we have to do in the kitchen? Mise en place. Mise en place, That's folks. Right, baby. Don't forget the, the mise en place. Very, very yes. important. All right, so tell them what the ingredients are we're using. All right, so we have a couple of ingredients that we're gonna use for our surf and turf. So we have, we're gonna start with the protein. Bone in ribeye, um, which is great. Ribeye is my favorite cut of meat. Bone in. Yes, bone in. <laughs> Keep the bone in. Keep the bone Ladies, in. Ladies, ears, but you know. <laughs> Prawns, also called freshwater shrimp. Six inch skewers. Fresh chopped garlic, balsamic glaze, all bay seasoning, beef stock, butter, Campari tomatoes, asparagus, Parmigiano Reggiano, rosemary, parsley, lemon, Pinot Noir. All right, folks, we gotta get things moving. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the equipment we need. Cast iron grill, cast iron flat griddle, half sheet pan. Grilling steaks, I don't care if it's outside on the grill, I don't care if it's inside the house, right? You need to introduce moisture back into that That's meat, right. right? So when I char this and I get this nice, I get that nice Maillard, that fond, mm -hmm. that crispiness on the steak, right? That color, that, that whole. Yes. I, when I, when I want to finish my steak off, I throw it in the oven and I add beef stock to the pan. When you do that, when the, when the, uh, steak goes into the oven, it relaxes a little bit more. It starts absorbing the yes. stock, right? That's right, yeah. So, and the steam helps also the cooking process. You're not gonna have no crusty parts on the sides, you know, the, the, the stock actually helps right. moisten the meat more. That's it. It That's says it. it right there, folks. We're not making this up as we go no, along. No, no, we no. know this for a fact. Of course. <laughs> we're the steak masters. <laughs> right there. You know, listen to With me. With all the respect to the South. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know all about it, right? <laughs> Remember that show, Big Bad Barbecue yeah, yeah. Bro? Yeah, yeah. The people in the South, yeah, they didn't know the people guy from, from Brooklyn. Too. They think they had the best they, steaks. Right. The idea is that they yeah. didn't know to get the guys from New York that nah, knew what man, they, they were don't, doing. Don't know. Anyway, uh, that's. We won't teach them today. I digress. That's another story for another time. <laughs> so, right. all right. Okay, so we, we did the stock, correct? Right, but beef stock for the ribeye. And of course, a little butter, everything's oh, butter better. Butter everywhere, please. <laughs> <laughs> Rub me with butter, <laughs> please. <laughs> you know? These are, this is that kind of show, folks. We don't need folks. no tanning lotion, we need butter. That's what's up right there. No, no, that's a good tanning lotion right there. <laughs> for the Let girls, me, you get butter on me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. Back in the day, you throw the olive oil on, you go out to the beach with the tank top on, big and everybody's tanned up Listen, and beautiful. All you need to have for breakfast, is me with butter and a couple of toast. That's it. <laughs> this. Oh, that's gonna go perfect. No, this. folks. Now, when we talk about wine and different things for uh, cooking and and pairing. enjoying and pairing with the steak, even though we have some fish here, the idea of having a bottle of wine, a red wine. The simple reason is I want something that's gonna that's gonna really last or something that's gonna hold up yes. to that that meaty the flavor, meat. right? Yes. And and also the roasted flavors and uh, for all the vegetables. Yes. So and also there's a secret about pairing um, red wines where, like for example, mm -hmm. a surf and turf. Um, yeah. Usually a white will go well with the fish part, 
but it probably won't pair right with the um, with, with the, the steak with or the, the steak. chicken part. Maybe yeah. the chicken. Chicken the maybe proteins. a little bit, right. Yeah, but red always playing the safe. Right, with so. especially rich, heavy uh, beef dishes, uh, you really want to sh- serve something that's got a little bit more robust Correct. to it. So I have here a Pinot Noir. Uh, again, I'll list this down below, right? Yeah, yeah. So we people like, can uh, understand, good, you know, the type. I I happen to like Louis Jadot, the you know his vintner. So the idea of the wines that he serves, I really enjoy. Yeah, and this yeah. is a Pinot Noir, right? A Pinot Noir is kind of like, it's in the red family, but yes, it's not as strong as a Cabernet. No. And I can't drink too much Cabernet. Even it doesn't matter what I'm eating. I know a lot of people like to go to that Cabernet. They, they go like to the Cabernet the, show. The, the sweet part of the wine. Right, so I need something that, that's not gonna overpower everything Correct. I'm eating at one time, so that's why I, I choose a Pinot Noir. It's a lot it's a lot easier on the back end, right, so for your trout. Yeah. And you gotta remember too, we having some of the tomatoes which are sweet already, you don't wanna overwhelm yourself with the sweet and the sweet. Yeah. You try so, to clean that palate, you know, try to get the little grapey taste. Yes, yes. That pairs with the meat. Yes, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start getting all this ready and we're gonna pour some wine. And Otto, I know for me, <laughs> you know, I'm straight old Brooklyn He's style, ready, right? Ready drink. <laughs> so that's my deal, I'm straight old Brooklyn style. We gotta get things moving in, in the kitchen here, but I think the first thing I have to do is, I'm gonna pour you a little. Yeah, man. And, 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 uh, Wanna cheers to this? Uh, yeah, Otto likes the fancy glass. Me, I'm, you I'm- Take me on a date now. <laughs> Jake night, 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 baby. <laughs> um, but I like, I'm old school, right, yeah. glass. This what goes. Did, what did you call it earlier? This is the old Goomba Brooklyn <laughs> special right here. You, we're going to put an edit on that. <laughs> that's it. But Don't that's what we're drinking. Yes. We're going to get started. Salud. Salud. Cheers. And like they say, Chindan, uh, I hope you die before I do. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, cheers, folks. We're going to get the surf and turf going. You guys come back. We're going to get to cooking. And that's it. That's All right. it. Enjoy, man. Cheers. Cheers, guys. The first protein we're going to be working with, of course, is certified Angus ribeye. Now, my kind of like my rule of thumb when I'm cooking steak, whether it's on the grill or at home, yeah. I'm two inch thick right here. Beautiful steak. Can't go wrong with a two-inch steak. <laughs> I'm two-inch steak here, partner. All right? But I love the ribeye, first of all, for the marbling, right? Yes. The marbling alone just makes it absolutely amazing. One of the best cuts of meat. I'm not doing anything to this, right? So when you're cooking steak, what are you what are you putting on there? Simple salt, pepper. That's might it. want might want to drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil if you if you put it on the grill. Right. Um, but that's it. It's, it's pretty simple. You don't wanna you don't want to stop putting mustard. You don't want to put, you know, put it. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is put the, the grill pan on. So you want to throw that on for me? Yeah, of course. Throw it on a high heat. Uh, Otto, tell them what the rule of thumb. The steak should be out at least how long before you cook it? I would say 20 to 25 minutes. Right. So uh, when you cook it, the internal temperature is not cold because you might have the outside of the steak cooked and the inside will be raw or like not the temperature that you want. Rest your meat after you, you everybody needs, you know you, you got to rest your meat afterwards <laughs> <laughs> room temperature room I mean. temperature <laughs> i think we got a little vino talking oh, here yeah of course salute mm. cheers um because it's two inches thick it's going to need time on top of the stove and then it's going to get finished in the oven that's right so let's just say Otto, right you were outside and doing this on the grill and excuse the fan folks but we're going to get the smoke yeah, out we of have it to. too <laughs> we but, have the fire department here today <laughs> so What's, what's gonna happen is, this is gonna go down on a really high heat that is to sear the outside that's of right. the ribeye, okay? Yeah. And then, while that's happening, we're gonna turn on the oven because Correct. this gets finished in the oven. So even if you're doing this outside on the grill, right? So if you're on the grill, goes on the high heat yeah. on the grill, right over the flames, right? Yep. Sear both sides. That's it. And then you take it and put it offset from the heat. You do not leave it on the high heat no. because it'll just burn the outside. That's right. And then the inside will be dry. And what do we always say? Keep, Keep your meat moist. moist. Can't have very, dry very meat. important. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ribeye and go right over okay. to the uh, cast iron. Right. And we will just flip flop. Let's do it. Right? Let's just flip. I'm going to pick it up. Boom. On the side that I put the salt and pepper down, that's what side it's Seasoning going on. Seasoning down first. Now listen. You hear the sizzling? You know, 
Hold on, hold on. You know what he's, you know what he's saying? I want to be moist. <laughs> I just want to be moist. Moist and eaten. As we said, we're going to finish the steak in the oven. Once we place our steak in the oven, we can also place our vegetables. Now, you have options at home on how to finish your, whatever, your starch or your veggies. You can roast them up on top of the grill as well. You can steam them if you want steamed vegetables. In this yep. case, we decided to, we put them in the oven. So much easier. Everything goes in the oven. Not One a lot time. of equipment. One time. We're good to go. So when you pick them up, just pick them up from the bottom gently. Try to rinse them off a little bit, you know. Trying to get a little bit of dirt off. Place them on the sheet pan on one side. We get our asparagus. Now with the asparagus. They were washed already. They were washed. Try to place them flat. Don't try to bunch them up on the, on the, on the sheet pan. You're trying to get that oil spread evenly. Same thing with the, with the seasonings, the salt and pepper. Yep. Like I said, you don't, you don't need to go crazy. You don't need to stop putting paprika on spare, none nah. of that. Salt nah. and pepper. Now we're gonna, um, you can choose between olive oil or truffle oil, whatever you desire to, um, to, to sprinkle on them. A truffle oil, to me, it's a, it's a, it goes well with the, with the Extremely steak. Well. Extremely well. It's nice well. and earthy, so yeah. um, I'm gonna I'm drizzle a little bit of the, um, of the truffle oil this time around, so. I like that. Listen to me, truffles? No, come on, folks. Delicious. We're good, we, we're going with the lemon zest right now for the shrimp, but oh, this nice. is towards the end. Ribeye is looking fantastic. It has that great crust on the outside. It's time for it to go in the oven. That's you right. know what I need? I need the beef stock. Got you right here. Okay, let's get the beef stock in here. So I'm gonna need the rosemary too. Just throw the sprigs right in there. Give me a pat of butter. Sure. All right. Pat of butter. Remember, everything on the stove is hot. Yes. And it's going into the oh, oven. How long is this going to take? Can you explain so, to them? So the ribeye inside the oven, this is two inches thick, right? Sets it four to six minutes for medium rare. And it goes right inside the oven. We're going to work on the shrimp. Yep. Um, so I got this beautiful prawns. Okay. You're trying to... Let, we're going to use these skewers, as we mentioned earlier, as part of our equipment, as, as part of our mise en place. Right. And the reason why? Because they curl up. Right. You don't want the shrimp to curl up. You want them, you want them straight. That's it. I'm going to give you a, a, a little trick. When you skewer shrimp, try to skewer from the bottom of the shell part. The, the top shell is too hard. The skewer can go off. It can hit you right in the hand. Look for the softer part. Then start close to the tail. Close to the tail. Start close Always. to the tail. J-Lo, if you're listening. Start close to the tail. <laughs> Jenny from the block. <laughs> See how it looks beautiful and straight? And That's I like how you it try too. To keep it. Uh, head and everything is still on. That's right. So we're going to take the asparagus Let's and the what are those called? Uh, Campari tomatoes. Those are Campari. That's that Italian tomato That's that there. Italian for thing. You. you hear? You hear? Yeah. All right. So you're going in the oven. Right. I'm going to move the shrimp or the prawns a little bit closer to where you need them. So we're using the, um, the flat griddle. All right. Um, we're going to use a little bit of olive oil. So you spread a little bit of oil. Okay. That's what's up. Don't overwhelm it, just enough. Get the prawns on. All right. Otto, those prawns look absolutely amazing. Amazing. So what's our next steps? Lemon are on there. Yes. With the shrimp, getting some nice grill marks. What does that also do, right, with the lemon? It just brings the aromatics into the, into the shrimp. Right. But also, when you are grilling the lemon, the sugars caramelize. That's right. It concentrates the flavor, So right? you're going to have that little sweet and sour flavor. Oh, that's going to awesome. be fantastic. Pay attention to the shrimp, always. You don't want them over, you don't want them overcooked. So just turn one over. Oh, and what are we looking for? We look color? Color, like a nice pinkish, reddish um, look. Um, but at the same time, remember, you gotta cook them enough for them to be well done inside as well. Right. O don't overcook them, don't overcook them because that shrimp will have a rubbery Yeah. As a rubbery texture. consistency, you the don't texture, want that. It, it's hard to chew, and you don't want that. When looking at our lemons, let's take a look. See that try part. We're gonna get it wrapped up. We're gonna Cheers. have a sip. Otto, everything looks absolutely fantastic. The prawns, the lemons, the, uh, the garlic butter. That's gonna be absolutely delicious. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost nah. finished. All right, so steak is done. You know how I know it's done? Cause it's done. I said <laughs> it's done. That's how I know it's done. You heard? So, I'm going in the oven. No, come on. Wow, look at that beautiful. Look at this. 
Are you crazy, folks? You ever seen me looking that beautiful? <laughs> and no. you know the best part? It's moist. You know yeah, it's moist. It is. Right? So it's coming out of the pan and it's going right on the cutting board to rest. This has to rest for at least 15 minutes. Taking out the veggies. Oh, Remember yes. the asparagus and the Campari's we oh, earlier? Absolutely delicious. When you see the little crackling on the tomatoes, that means the tomatoes are finished. Everything is gonna go right this beautiful board on this right here. board right here. Yeah, right. once I went to a bar, the bartenders were using this to spank people for shots. So I tried it in my college Shh, days. Listen to me, you get a little spanking with this bad boy right here. That gonna I leave him off. I couldn't sit for three days. <laughs> I <laughs> hate when that happens. <laughs> get this thing on the uh, on the plate right there. Well, the asparagus. Look at these asparagus, man. They look amazing. Oh, come on now. I don't care who you are. This is gonna be delicious. And the Camparis, right. the how Camparis. are we gonna do this? We gotta be easy we and gentle? We gotta be gentle with them because if not, they're gonna come out divine. You don't want oh, that. Oh, you no, want the no. presentation to be tip top. Right, we have a few that, that came off the vine, right? It's all right, we still okay. wanna be edible. Right. I'll use my hands this time. It's all right. Chef. All right, so we're gonna get the prawns on there. No, come on, they look fantastic. This is gonna be absolutely delicious. How about the Old Bay? Yeah, we sprinkle a little bit just to finish it up. On, right on the prawns. Yeah, don't overwhelm the dish. Just, yeah, just a little sprinkle. Old Bay is always good. On shrimp, nice. on crab, lobster. That taste, it really does bring the seafood taste it out. It does, it does. We're gonna sprinkle a little bit of the zest as well. And this is just to bring the seafood. The lemon seafood. zest. That's right. Come on, folks, here. We, we're really cooking here. This isn't no joke. This is good That's stuff right here. fantastic. And, right, squeeze the, listen, when you have the lemon like this, you can squeeze it on everything. You can squeeze it on the steak, you can squeeze it on the prawns, the vegetables, just about anything. That's that right. acid will really brighten up the flavors for That's everything, right. right? All right, so I'm gonna slice this up. What do you got left? All right, so we got the garlic butter. As you can tell, the garlic is nice and soft. It gave the flavor to the butter already. Use a tablespoon or a teaspoon. Remember, be careful with the handles. And just drizzle on top of the shrimp. Oh, shit. Excuse my reach. That's the way to do it right there. Yo, you could reach by me anytime with the garlic butter, you heard? <laughs> <laughs> I got the steak. Man, it's super duper moist, right? It is. You know how, know how, we, how we do. Okay, so now I'm just gonna slice this up. But you gotta, that's absolutely incredible. Okay, so I'm just gonna slice this. This is the way it, I cut it from the bone. So I'm gonna slice it on the diagonal. I'm gonna take the bone here, just like this. I'm gonna put the bone down here first. Presentation always. Okay, and then I'm gonna take it and start slicing. Wow. No. Look at the term on that meat. No, that's the way it's to the do right it. The right temperature, the right timing. Nice, cooked perfectly inside. So the last thing that's going on the board will be the ribeye. And voila, we're gonna slide this over just a hair. And then this whole thing is gonna go right there. And Bob's your uncle. Guess what? Before Chef forgets, remember that fresh parsley we got from our garden? Yes. We're gonna finish our dish. We have to finish the dish with the uh, fresh parsley. Very important. Garnish your meals, right? Make, listen to me, when, even when you're cooking at home, make sure your presentation is okay, Please, right? Because do. you eat with your eyes That's first, right. right? So if it looks appealing. That impression is gonna yeah. hit the customer, hit the your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever you, whoever you're cooking for. No, it's come gonna on. make it better. Happy. Grab some uh, forks and knives. Let's do this. Right inside here, top pot. We're gonna get to the eating now, okay? You folks get to watch, I'm sorry, that's just the way it goes. And we don't have any takeout containers, and we're not doing delivery, this ain't Uber Eats. Oh, please. All right? <laughs> this ain't Scooby Snacks for you. The only Uber Eats that exists is from your kitchen to your basement, that's it. That's what's up. So, okay, first thing, ribeye. No, come on. Time to eat, man. Mm. I always go for the fatty parts, best parts. Salud. Everybody likes a little jiggly, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll jiggle here. I'm very interested in the uh, the Camparis. Yeah, the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Because oh, there's still a lot of juice in them. Mm -hmm. No, I love that. Right. Let's just give it a little. And the the great thing about this on the board, you just help yourself. Mm. 
sweet, Probably amazing, sweet. Wow, gives it a different texture to the dish. Mm -hmm. mm. The asparagus, right? That's like having strawberries. Yeah, this this tomato is amazing. No, the truffle oil on there. Oh, no, that's what's up. Asparagus. Mm. Now wait a minute. I'll take the lemon. Uh, I would squeeze this right over the steak. I would too. And then the shrimp. Mm -hmm. Chef, this is absolutely amazing. Thank you for coming down. Thank you for I had a me. blast. I had a blast. Thank surf you. and Big surf turf. right here. Me and Otto, absolutely delicious. Listen, guys, get out there and do this yourself, okay? This is not hard to do. I gotta go. We gotta I'm starving. Eat, We're gonna eat some we more. We too hard for this. That's what's up right there. Keep your meat moist, folks. Don't dry it out, whether you're indoors <laughs> or outdoors. Now, me and Otto got to get to this. It's got to get to finished. Fight for the steak. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we're going to get a little <laughs> better. Right, look at that right there. Right? Oh, <laughs> Certified Angus Beef gave me this $50 gift card to give away. This is what you're going to do. You're going to like this video. Then you're going to follow myself and Certified Angus Beef on all our social media. The links are in the description below. Then tag us and three of your friends in a post showing us how you keep your meat moist. Don't forget to hashtag restaurant challenge and keep your meat moist. Then share it with as many people as you like. The contest will start today, July 4th, and end on the Everything and Nothing podcast on my YouTube channel, July 18th. So make sure you are subscribed. Don't forget to ring that bell so you get notified when I put a video up. Any questions, any comments, just leave them below. And so, you know, because this is a contest, YouTube, nor any of my other social media platforms are affiliated with this contest. So, good luck, and keep your meat moist.